Good evening, friends. Welcome to our home. We're glad you've joined us for this Maundy Thursday service of communion. I hope you have bread and grape juice or wine available. Crackers are great. Whatever you have that is from the soil will be fine. We're glad that you're with us. Just a couple of reminders that tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, we'll gather again for the service of Tenebrae on Good Friday as we remember the suffering and passion of our Lord. On Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, we'll gather together for the great vigil of Easter. Hopefully the rains will hold off. We can kindle the Easter fire and hear the stories of God's saving work. On Sunday morning, we will be together for Easter celebration at 8.30 and 10.30. Again, on Easter, we will celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, so I hope that you will have the elements there in your worship space so that we can join together even across the miles in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. If you are with us tonight, I hope you're signing in on the comment section of our Facebook page so that we know that you are a part of the congregation, dispersed though we may be. It is good to have all of you here. It is good to be together as we begin the three days, the Triduum, as we prepare for the great good news that is to come on Sunday morning. So we'll begin our worship. And I hope you'll join me in the opening sentences. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as Christ has loved us, let us love one another. Beloved people of God, this is the day when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him, setting us free from sin and death forever. This is the day when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash the disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. Let us pray. O God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed his disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial, and praise him always as Lord and Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us, because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence in faith and penitence. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love one another as you command. In your mercy, forgive and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us with Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. As we come to hear the word, let us pray that God will lead us into understanding. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you have given us a new commandment to love and serve one another in Jesus' name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson comes to us from the book of Exodus and reminds us of the roots of the Passover celebration. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb from each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day will be in a rem shall be a remembrance for you. You will celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The second lesson is from John's Gospel, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for that reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe, and in return to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, 
and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And the third and final lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, reading in the 14th chapter. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I, never, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Glory be to God who gives us the word. May God write that word on our hearts, and may God and God alone receive glory, honor, and praise. In those old sitcoms that many of us used to watch, when a child or a group of kids got caught doing something they were not supposed to be doing, the exasperated adult would bellow, What is the meaning of this? It was funny, or at least it was supposed to be. For years, literally millennia, Christian people have gathered at the table of the Lord. We have shared the bread and the cup, we have heard the ancient words of the institution of the supper of our Lord. We may even be able to recall the very first time we participated in the meal. But for too many of us, we aren't exactly sure of what it is we are doing. We know we're supposed to be remembering. It says so on our table back at the church. In remembrance of me, the carving tells us. We know we're supposed to be remembering. Still, what is the meaning of this? Why bread and wine? Why are we eating together? What is the meaning of this? Every day of this past week, we have been having an online Bible study, considering the events of each of the days of Holy Week. Our study has been based on the book, The Last Week, by the late Marcus J. Borg and John Dominic Crossan. In the material for today, Thursday, they offer this summary statement. The Last Supper is about bread for the world, God's justice against human injustice, a new Passover from bondage to liberation, and participation in the path that leads through death to new life. That is a terrific summary statement. Let's have a quick look at each of those points. First, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper is about bread for the world. In, Mark, in Mark's Gospel, one of the things we read about Jesus is his sharing meals with all kinds of people. They aren't always necessarily socially acceptable people. He was often in the company of sinners and outcasts. Jesus had a penchant for dining with undesirables. Jesus was a hero of the poor and the powerless. The oppressed were drawn to him. The overlooked and forgotten found a friend in him. And among their greatest concerns was the concern for food. They knew hunger all too well. So the prayer he taught teaches us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Give us food for today. 
Interestingly, another of the common concerns was debt. The prayer had something to say about that too. Mark tells us of the feeding of a multitude of 5,000 and more. In telling that story, Mark uses four words that we read again this evening. Took, blessed, broke, and gave. When faced with hunger, Jesus did not shrink back. The disciples tell him to send the crowd away. Jesus tells them to feed them. Five loaves and two fish are presented to Jesus. And when it passes through its hand, his hands, there is plenty. The point of the story is not about Jesus multiplying the food. The point of the story is about a just distribution of the food. The food they have is enough when it passes through Jesus' hands of justice. The table of the Lord reminds us that God is the Lord of all creation who provides abundantly for all. If there are those who are hungry, it is because the rest of us have failed to distribute God's provision justly. The bread and wine we share is both a sacred action and a reminder of what it means to be part of the empire of God. There is always room and there is always enough at Christ's table of plenty. Second, this meal is a new Passover. Our friends in the Jewish community celebrated the first night of Passover last night. The traditional foods were prepared. The four questions were asked. The story of God's deliverance and liberation was told and reenacted through the meal. One of the reasons I love the Passover celebration is that the story of God's work in setting free the slaves of Egypt, which is our story too, is that it is always told in the first person. When we were slaves in Egypt, when God set us free, when God parted the sea for us, you never feel removed from the story, whether you are Jew or Gentile. We are in that story. It is our story. It's personal. We are reminded that the final plague in Egypt, when the angel of death or the destroyer was sent into the land, and those who had the blood of the lamb on the lintel and doorposts of their house experienced the passing over of the destruction. And we are reminded that the ancient Israelites were told to eat the meal quickly with their staff in their hands, dressed to leave, sandals on their feet. There was not even time to allow the bread to rise. And so the meal was a reminder of God's presence, God's protection against destruction, and God's provision for the journey. When we gather at the Lord's table, we are reminded that we have been set free, that God is with us, that God will provide wherever the journey leads. Finally, when we gather at the table of the Lord, we hear words that shock us. This is my body. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Early Christians often had the charge of cannibalism leveled against them because they were eating flesh and drinking blood. To the uninitiated ear, it made no sense. The language of body and blood points to a violent death. Borg and Crossan point out that when a person dies nonviolently, we speak of the separation of body and soul. When a person dies violently, we speak of a separation of body and blood. We are reminded at this table that Jesus died as a victim of violence, violence perpetrated by an unholy alliance of church and state against one who dared to challenge the unjust and wrongful ways of the world around him. In partaking of bread and wine, body and blood, we participate with Jesus and even in Jesus. 
We join Jesus in passing from death to resurrection. We commit ourselves to the servant life of Jesus rather than the patterns of domination and oppression practiced in the world. In eating the bread and drinking the cup, we participate in Christ rather than rely on a substitution by Christ. What is the meaning of this? Much more than is readily seen and overtly obvious. The Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, is about bread for the world, God's justice against human injustice, a new Passover from bondage to liberation, and participation in the path that leads through death to new life. This year, in the midst of anxiety, disappointment, exhaustion, death, and grief, it seems as if this is not a holy week. The distractions of a pandemic are hard to overcome. We are consumed by it. We find it hard to escape from it. We are confronted by the reality that a disproportionate number of the victims of COVID-19 are poor, are black, and brown, are among the most vulnerable in our society, reminding us that we have not done justly and that we have neglected a fair and equitable distribution of God's resources, hoarding for ourselves and leaving those without to fend for themselves. This is not the way of Christ. We are facing the reality of captivity in pleasurable prisons while easily forgetting the prisoner behind bars or the child in a cage at the border. Our captivity is similar to that of those of the elite who are sentenced to country club prisons while others are in conditions that we would not want our pets to live in. We can take a walk outside, see springtime in bloom and smell the freshness of the air. There are those behind bars who can never feel the warmth of the sun on their skin. Though inconvenienced, many of us can work from home as though nothing had really happened. We are oblivious to those who have lost their jobs, those who have lost their businesses those who cannot afford their rent, their mortgage, their medicine, their daily bread. At the table of the Lord, we are reminded of God's power, that we are called to be a people of justice and righteousness. At the table of the Lord, we are reminded that we have been set free by God's own hand from our bondage to the world and the misguided ways and nourished for the new life that God provides. At the table of the Lord, we participate in the paradoxical pattern of the empire of God. We die in order to rise. We participate with and in Christ's death and resurrection. And that is the meaning of this, at least in part for now and evermore. Amen. I invite you to join me in the evening prayers of intercession. Liberating and redeeming God, we give thanks that you hear the cries of your people. Therefore, in our time of trial, we call upon your name, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you delivered our ancestors from slavery and led them to a land of promise and plenty, liberate all who are captive or oppressed and bring them to a place of abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you saved your people from death on the night of the Passover, redeem us from sin and death through Jesus Christ, the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, stooped down to wash his disciples' feet, 
Teach us to love and serve our neighbors with Christ-like compassion and humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christ the Lord has handed on to us a feast of grace in his body and blood, help us to share with all who hunger the gifts we have received from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our liberator and redeemer, we give thanks that you have heard our cry. Continue to lead us from death to life eternal and let our lives be a sign of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, this shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Paul says to the church, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So come to the table, a table that extends throughout the world this night. We are gathered together at many tables and still at one table. Come to the table. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You made us in your image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot your covenant, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In humility, he descends from your heights to kneel in obedience to love's commands. He who is boundless takes on the bondage of our sin. He who is free takes our place in death's prison. He who is risen leads us to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands. Bound to Christ, set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when with the redeemed of all the ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal and arrest, took bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed, broke, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant from God, sealed in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of all. As often as you drink of it, remember me. 
St. Paul tells us, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. So there at your table, I invite you to take the bread. I invite you to break it. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And there at your table, I invite you to take juice or wine. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? These are the gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to share the elements there in your worship space. Let us pray together. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so we begin the three days. May God journey with us. In our words and in our remembrance, may God stay with us. In our joys and in our sorrows, may God guide and help us. In our doubts and in our fears, may God hold us near. 